and welcome back to another edition of the OHIO Podcast. I'm your host, Buckeye Boggs. That man over there, well, he's the total eclipse, but not of my heart. That's Chris Wilds enjoying himself oh, on magical day here in the Buckeye State with the eclipse. And as soon as the eclipse was over, Chris, not only did the moon leave the, I guess you could say, the uh, face of the sun, but then... One running back, Dallin Hayden, left the program. Um, were you surprised by that announcement? Because I was taken back a little bit. I think maybe a little bit. I kind of thought he was the guy. Now, we knew he wasn't going to be getting the the majority of the carries this year. But I think next year he was in line to be the guy. I think that we had enough carries to go around this year to where he could have maybe had a three, four, five hundred 500-yard season. And still been fresh going into next year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was a little bit taken back. But at the same time, with NIL going on, with, uh, you know, so many teams looking for quality players right now, I, I'm not real surprised. I would, And I don't want to get ahead of us if you're going to talk where we think he may land. So, um, but, but I think there's a... Uh, Pretty good chance that uh, some friends of ours down in Tennessee might not be too upset. Um, I actually have a different idea, but we'll we'll finish the pot or finish this episode with that. Or, or do you think that maybe he's going to follow someone? Yes. Um, well, no, not there. Um, follow a, a former teammate is what I'm thinking. Gotcha. Um, that being said, did Tony Alford somehow screw this up? I've seen a lot of Tony Alford hate from this fan base on Twitter saying that his decision as a freshman a couple years ago when he did so well against Maryland then saw like basically nothing the very next game against that team up north, followed by the fact that last year they decided they were going to redshirt him. And even despite all the injuries that they had at the position, they stuck to their guns and continued to redshirt him that those decisions had a lot to do with his decision today. Do you agree or disagree with that? Absolutely. You're talking about a kid who came out and in limited playing time put up, what, nearly 600 yards of uh, offense as a true freshman. He was the guy we went to when we had no one else to go to as a freshman. And all of a sudden, he was forgotten last year. Now, whether that was a strategic decision to try to keep an extra year of eligibility with him or whether that was just being an idiot on the part of Tony Alford, I I don't know. Um, But yeah, I mean, that definitely is going to have an impact. When you go from being a major piece of a major college program's offense to being the forgotten man the next year, especially if it's not communicated well, there, there's going to be some uh, some hurt feelings. It hurt and, my uh, feelings. He, I think somebody hurt his feelings, and uh, you know now he's he's taking his talents elsewhere. Why why wait to to now though? Why didn't you jump in the portal when it was open at the end of the season? Why did you wait? Because to the Quinchon Judkins, he saw yeah. the writing on the wall. He didn't see the he. I, I don't think he saw the possibility that there was going to be the two of them still there. He figured even if Judkins came, I think he figured Travion may have been going. And with Travion not declaring for the draft, with Quinchon Quinchon Judkins coming in, I really feel like he did not see an opportunity for him um, this season. And, you know, we got people, you know, already here as well. Mm Mm-hmm who is going to push him for playing time next year already anyhow, possibly even this year. That's where I'm going to go next. Is if Peoples is looking better in spring camp, then maybe the writing was on the wall. That I think that is a very real possibility right there. That, that Dallin saw the fact that if he stayed, there's a very real possibility he's not even RB1 next year. Yeah. And... Um, that's disappointing for him, but also disappointing for us when you consider depth at the position now. So, 
so which Eric, we might we might have saw this coming considering and maybe it was partially new running back coach but what was it over the last weekend we uh handed out four more offers to 2025 running backs yeah um so what you're saying your belief is tony alford mishandled the situation Judkins came in and took away his carries this year and then james peoples is pushing him for playing time next year and he thinks he needs to go elsewhere to get that playing time that would be my gut instinct it's a combination of all of them together yeah, perfect storm not really one thing but multitude yeah. of things oh you know you're probably there's the truth is probably laced somewhere in that um I mentioned in an article I just got finished writing and posted that, you know, it, it is interesting that a week after Carlos Lachlan is hired and he's talking about he thinks he can uh, carve out some playing time for himself with the media that a couple of days later and a couple practices into Lachlan's tenure as the new running backs coach that now all of a sudden he's in the portal. Um. I don't want to question a young man's um, ability to be coached hard, but he was, I'm sure, going to be receiving some hard coaching. And, you know, it wasn't Carlos Lachlan that recruited him. It was right. Tony Alford that recruited him. Do you think that had anything to do with his decision? I would say that probably played into it. Um, like I said, I think it was a multitude of things. I think that's definitely a factor that could have played into it. and. As you hear things coming out of camp, you know, and you hear the the way the new running back coach talks, you know, I don't care how many stars you got, whoever is the best man is going to get the playing time. We heard things about TC Coffee looking awfully good in camp. Yeah, you, you, and, I've heard and you and I both know that Lachlan is not afraid about playing playing a kid that's a walk. He's going to play whoever's going to give him the best numbers. Mm -hmm. And if he feels the TC Coffee is going to provide better numbers than what Dallin Hayden's going to provide. That's what he's going to do. But what's, that's tough for me to swallow when Dallin Hayden had really good numbers. He averaged five yards of carries a freshman, 5.8 in limited playing time last year. Now, if you look back, though, Eric, we did hear rumors at times that he was having a little trouble keeping hold of the ball in practice. Was that an issue? I I don't I mean that's not I can't imagine you jump in the portal after a couple fumbles though. No, you know? no, but like I said, I think I don't think it's any one thing. I think there's just been a culmination of things. Sure. And something finally pushed him over the edge. I was worried about this from the moment we got Judkins. And I think something, whether it was the new running backs coach, whether it was him seeing that, hey, I, I'm going to be pressed for for playing time next year. Yeah. What, what, whatever it was, I think it was a multitude of things that just combined for the perfect storm. Yep. And he just said, you know what? I think I need to take my talents elsewhere where I'm going to get the opportunity to perform at a high level. Yeah. All right. Where do you think he ends up? I mean, obviously, I've heard a lot of people saying what you alluded to, that he's probably going to head here, back. Here's my other question. Team. Was he at all close with Kyle McCord? Probably not. You know, I, I wouldn't think, but you know. Okay, can I just give you what my what my prediction is? I you went on his Penn State, don't you? No, I did. Don't I went to his Twitter Twitter today? Yeah, and just looked at like the last month of stuff, and he reposted a t an article about Noah Rogers who lit it up last Saturday at NC State in their in their um, spring game. Yeah. And then <clears throat> he reposted or retweeted or made a made a tweet about how fun it is to watch the South Carolina girls basketball team. I'm thinking interesting. I'm not so sure he doesn't go east to either South Carolina or NC, NC State. State. And I really think NC State might be one to look at. Um but if he does head back south to the home state, would it be Memphis, not necessarily Tennessee? 
I think if he goes to Memphis, he walks in as a day one starter. And they've got a good history of producing some pretty good running backs. They do. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I just go back to thinking Tennessee really wanted this kid when he was being recruited to begin with. I would not be surprised if the volunteers don't go after this guy. Hmm. I would and say. Here's the thing. I think wherever he goes, it's got to be for an RB1 spot. I, I don't think. Or, or don't, at least a Tennessee's split. Tennessee's going to be the answer. Or at least a split. Um, I would say right now it's a two horse race without knowing anything. And I'm going to say Tennessee, NC State, with. Memphis being the third one that's kind of right between the two, maybe South Carolina. He's going to have options. And I think those are four to really look at. I don't think there's a chance he goes to Ann Arbor. That one would be, but if he did, boy, that would be another slap in the face to Ryan Day and this fan base, two of them in one. Let me tell you what, I don't know that I would want to be him if he did because I feel like, we know the team took Alford going personal, but man, to have a chance to get the guy who uh, not not necessarily hurt the guy, but I mean just to lay some licks on the guy who slapped you in the face. You, you know, know, there's a lot there's a lot of positivity when someone goes to a, the portal from the fan base trying to be overly nice. I hate that. I think it's fake nice. Go be great, young man. Like, dude, you know, like. I get it. You want to be kind. You don't want to be a hypocrite. Right. You know, I understand that because you don't want to be the person who's like angry every time someone jumps in the portal. And then when someone jumps in the portal and comes to you, you celebrate it. Like that's being hypocritical. But at the same time, like, I don't want to be that same guy who's going to be like, you, yeah, go be great. And then he goes, be great. So it's your rival. Yeah. Because then those same people are going to be upset and angry. So I withhold my, comments normally i wait let's let's see what let, let this let this thing play out i really believe he's going to the sec i really do Wherever you know goes, i think it's sec there's, maybe ACC. there's a lot of guys who jump in the portal and go down i-71 from columbus to cincinnati i mean that seems to be like yeah. the number one landing spot for buckeyes who just weren't quite enough to get on the good enough to get on the field but yet they're really good and then they go down to cincinnati and about 50 percent of them land and do well and the other 50 percent you find out they just weren't going to play anywhere in division one you know so it seems to just be hit or miss on those but you know i it, usually when it's a portal thing within the first couple years that kid will either go to the place he was recruited heavily that he didn't decide to go to yep caleb downs yep um or he you know goes back home where he's from, which would be the state of Tennessee. So hit the like, share, subscribe. We really do appreciate it. Big live show tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern. Do not miss that. Tuesday, 8 o'clock Eastern, big announcement show. Chris and I will be here to let everybody know the big news, and that's why I've got my collared shirt on tonight. I'm doing a bunch of guest spots on other podcasts uh, with the announcement of this huge news, so you're not going to want to miss that. If you haven't haven't already, please consider joining. Hit the join button right here on our YouTube channel for three ninety nine a month. You won't even miss it. Comes right out of your account. Uh, helps us out. Helps the show out. Lets us know you appreciate the content that we produce on a daily basis, and uh, you'll get a free T-shirt in the deal as well. Also, we're gonna have our big yearly. I think this is year number three of our tailgate yes. on at the uh, year three or four of our tailgate down at the shoe. For the spring game this Saturday, be on the lookout on our uh, Twitter and on our Facebook accounts to let you know exactly where we are that morning as soon as Chris and I get there and we get set up somewhere around St. John Arena is where we're going to try to land a spot for the tailgate this year. Chris, till next time, OH. I O. Go Bugs. <laughs>